Okay. Hello and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Nick Rohn with the Asset Leadership Network, and I am excited to uh, be talking to Anto. And Anto will have to say his own last name for me because I haven't heard it well Rudy enough Arjo. yet. Rudy Arjo. Okay. Rudy Arjo. It's pretty okay. easy. That's thank cool. you. Uh, and we'll get more from Anto in just a moment, but we first want to thank our patron members, Jacobs, Mantech, Onuma, ABS Quality Evaluations, and CGI, as well as all our organizational members, especially Patty.io for Anto joining us today and all the work they're doing. Um, so let's get to that. And uh, before we do, we just want to say thank you for joining us and send any comments or questions to the chat. Uh, so we can hear from you if you're watching. Excellent. So um, I'm very happy to have Anto here as a, a featured guest. He has been uh, part of BIMSTORM activities we've done in the past. And since uh, joining the ALN in uh, August, uh, he's working really closely with the ALN and another group, the Coalition for Smarter Buildings, which we're signing a... Uh, uh, memorandum of understanding uh, regarding, and uh, I'm happy because when I saw Anto operate in uh, 2008 at Smart uh, at Grid Week in San Jose, I really liked the way he facilitated a lot of smart people who were doing important work, and uh, it's glad to have him as part of the smart people on this team now. So Anto, we start with the question of how did you get where you're at in your asset management journey? Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on here and uh, great to be part of uh, this group. Um, and um, I think my, my career that's related to all of this started back in 1989. And I didn't have, I mean, obviously I didn't, know what I was doing was actually dealing with assets. Uh, that was not the problem. Somebody came to me, I was living in England at the time, somebody came to me and said, I was, I was developing software. Somebody came to me and said, can you connect this system to that system? Right? And here are two RS-232 um, sockets. And I said, yes. And that then started me on a journey of, um, of, say, of figuring out uh, the, the need uh, for systems that are in buildings, HVAC, security, et cetera. There are a lot of systems that, that the numbers are growing. The need for them to talk to each other. That was sort of the premise that I started back in 80s, late 80s, 90s. Um, system integration was the sort of the way to think about that. Um, we, um, uh, so that, that request from that gentleman back in London, that ended up in me um, creating an integration platform called the CDC engine back in uh, that was released back in uh, uh, 1990. Um, so that was all about integrating different systems, um, and that that sort of evolved. That that I think a lot of people think about that as middleware. Right? There's a lot of sort of middleware platforms. So that uh, so we did that uh, in the UK, and the product that we created um, was was used. I wouldn't say widely used, but it was uh, used in interesting projects in, in the UK and in Europe. And then I uh, developed uh, addition, uh, some other um, integration platforms after that uh, with newer technologies and newer sort of um, approaches. Um, one of them, uh, one of the platforms that I created ended up getting acquired by what is now Schneider Electric. And that's uh, what uh, brought me over to, to the US. And uh, so, uh, with that, um, I started to just sort of continue this whole progress of uh, trying to figure out how best to integrate different systems. That was always the sort of the thing in um, uh, in, in my head. And uh, I, I changed uh, what I was doing from developing software to organizing conferences. And sometimes I wonder why I did that. But anyway, I did. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And I got to meet um, people like uh, Mike and Kimon and lots of other people so that was really great um but then sort of uh, six years ago i i sort of asked myself you know what's what's going on in the buildings world and started to look at that again and sort of wondered if there was an opportunity to 
create something new because I was itching to to do something, <laughs> some software thing. Um, and then I was living in um, in the Bay Area in San Francisco at the time, um, in the middle of all the obviously all the, the tech, Silicon Valley tech. Um, and I kind of stumbled upon this question that I started asking myself, which is now that we have this thing called the internet, which really didn't exist back in the nineties. I mean, it was there, but you know, it was not. It was not something that we were all using the way we we do now. Mm -hmm. Have the internet and the cloud and various other things. I asked myself, how would you build an integration platform with that? Because whatever I did in nineties didn't have that, so you kind of built everything from scratch, right? And so that that really was the trigger for creating Paddy. Um, that was uh, five, six years ago. That's kind of trigger that. Um, and uh, just in case you're wondering what the word Paddy means, um, I am Indonesian by birth. Um, and Paddy is uh, the, one of the Indonesian words for rice. And grains of rice is my sort of analogy to the, the billions of things, IoT things that are out there. Right, and this whole notion that there may be a billion things out there from an IoT perspective, but I actually, I and each each one of us really don't care about the fact that there are billions. We just care about the bowl of rice, the bowl of rice grains that we care about, that we want to consume. Right, so Paddy becomes this sort of this analogy of controlling or managing um, the IoT things that are out there that matters to me. And the, the the things that matter to me is going to be very different to the things that, that, that matter to to Mike or to anybody else, right? So in, this, in the same way, the rice bowl is my rice bowl and Mike has his own rice bowl. It's, that's kind of the, 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 the philosophy there. So that's that's kind of um, the, the, the path. And we've created um, in Paddy a, an online platform uh, that we think is, um, is, really, uh, is really good and it's really flexible. Uh, that obviously uses the the, the internet, and um, we also created a um, connectivity technology uh, that generally goes under the, the the name of connection profile that allows connection of systems across basically networks across IT networks without requiring um, the creation of drivers and um, common um, uh, data format in the middle, which is typically what happens in in middleware. You have drivers that convert for, uh, a, a particular protocol into something in the middle that then converts it to the other side. We don't do that at all. That that's kind of the, uh, in, in my view, that's kind of the old way of thinking about it. So we've created this way where you where you have two systems. The, the premise of it is that two systems may need to interact with each other to do something because they have data that would be useful for the benefit of the, of the building. And what this technology does is it allows them in a standardized way to, to communicate, right? In a very, very standardized way. So that's kind of the technology. But anyway, so that that's Patty. Um, but sort of in the middle of all of this, um, I'm gonna share a slide here. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. In the middle of all of this, um, we started to just to, to think sort of more sort of strategically and more sort of um, through you know through a process about what's really going on here. And really, what's going on? What I've been doing the last thirty years is um, integrating different silos. Right. That's kind of um, and you know that 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 concept is is in itself not new. But the, the realization is that these silos exist for a reason. Um, they're not there just uh, for no reason at all. They exist for a reason, and it's a very important reason. It's because the HVAC silo actually represents the HVAC industry. Everything from education to rules and technologies and products and best practices and everything else. That is very peculiar to HVAC. The same goes with fire and lighting and any of these silos, right? So each of these silos is really sort of a community and industry is um, a, a group of people that know how to do that thing well, right? And 
that's great. We want that because we want the best HVAC system in a building. We want the best fire system in the building, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter which silo. We want the best silo in the building. Uh, but one of the one of the conversations with with Timon and 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 Mike as well and other people, um, is sort of brought this sort of concept that these silos are the uh, the the silos are actually the thing that makes a building. Building is really made up from, from a systems perspective out of these uh, different silos, out of these different trades. That's what makes a building. And a building is an asset, so assets are made up of silos. Took me 30 years to figure that out. Isn't it funny? It's all so obvious once you actually understand it. Yeah. Right. So then the sort of uh, the approach that I, you know, the question that I asked, how do you, how do you make all of these things work? Um, you know, now that we have the internet sort of became the answer because really what you do with this um, is you say, okay, you abstract out the, inf uh, the, the important information that is necessary for, for other silos out of these silos into a sort of a, a, an abstraction layer Right, which um, because we now live in the in the in a cloud sort of um, uh, in the cloud world, we think about this as cloud native. In other words, just assume that it's in the cloud. Right? And you'll see in a minute that it may not actually be in the cloud, but it doesn't matter. Just assume that it's in the cloud because the cloud is massive. The cloud has you know unlimited resources, unlimited network capability. You can reach anything from anything in the cloud. It has you know, it, it it is sort of uh, massive and it is uh, really really powerful. Right, so this concept of abstracting the important uh, the important pieces of information from these silos into what is essentially a twin of that thing. So if there is a um, a, um, a, a, a space here with a temperature, um, then then what we want to do is we want to create a space and the temperature up there, um, um, so that. It can then start to be uh, shared across um, the the cloud native abstraction because they're all the same because they're all in the cloud. We stand a chance of making them uh, communicate with each other. Uh, so that's kind of the the, the way the, the way of thinking about it. Um, and really, what that then brings is this this ability to create connections between any of these uh, twins. Uh, and because they're all up in the cloud level in a sort of standardized way, they um, they can interoperate with each other at that standardized level, right? We're not asking the fire system to talk to the energy system or any of these systems to talk directly to anything else. We're, we're extracting the necessary information so that the necessary information is what's being uh, transferred between silos. And then the, the, the other sort of realization to this is that what's going on across here is actually, it's normally not a lot of data. It's normally very, very small pieces of data, like the, the space is occupied, or this is the state, the condition of um, a piece of equipment or something like that. And so in typically in the, within the silos, you have enormous amounts of um, data and information that's being uh, worked on, but up here, Generally speaking, you don't need that. You just need the, the things that's necessary to orchestrate the whole, uh, orchestrate all of these silos in a building. And the way to think about this is, is like a, it's a, like a conductor um, of an orchestra, right? The conductor of an orchestra is just one entity, right? It's, it's somebody that everybody can see, everybody in the orchestra can see, and he or she will have a little baton Right, a little bit on, and he doesn't do much. Right, he's sort of, he's not banging drums and he's not, um, you know, playing an instrument. He's just delicately sort of saying, "You're next, you're next, you're next. You're too loud, whatever it is." Right, that's what an orchestra, uh, a conductor does in an orchestra, and that's what this is basically doing. Right, so it's a light-handed uh, way of of. Uh, Excellent analogy, Anto. Yeah. So this this is the architecture, right? Um, can Which, I can I ask some questions here? Because I suspect uh, we could get a master's uh, in this. So part of this slide here includes the logo for the Coalition for Smarter Buildings. And 
the asset leadership network is uh, engaging in uh, reviewing a memorandum of understanding. We just have to go through the process and then our two organizations will be officially working together because what you have here is a, an ability to approach the C-suite with an asset management governance solution that can act as a pilot for how they want to actually implement asset management for their planes and trains and other asset categories also. And mm -hmm. I am sure that this theoretical approach will be useful and uh, expandable. Yeah, likely so, that, that is likely the same, the same model as this. Yes. Right. Whether it's locomotives or anything else is. is, is but it's is, beautiful so. to just stay focused within this yeah. HVAC and automated building systems um, approach. So, can you tell us a little bit about the um, the mechanism for making these transfers? And uh, I believe you have some slides that you could share to explain that. Yeah. So you you mentioned C4SB. Uh, C4SB is the Coalition for Smarter Buildings and what C4SB does with Monday Live, which is a thought leadership conversation that happens on, on Mondays, somewhat similar to um, Alien at Three. Um, basically, what the coalition focuses on is identifying barriers to the, the, the mass adoption or the scalable adoption of smarter buildings and uh, do something about it. Okay. That's really the sort of the, the, the mission of the, the coalition, right? So one way to sort of explain that is when you look at this diagram, you say, okay, that makes sense. That can work, right? Uh, but when you look at buildings and you look at the systems that go into buildings, all of these systems and more, you realize that the architecture is not like this, right? The HVAC will be uh, vendor A that does a specific type of gateway with some sort of protocol, maybe it's backnet, maybe it's proprietary, uh, all of these other systems will have their own sort of ways of doing things, right? So these these red lines don't exist. They're all different colored lines. If you think about it that way, right? So we can't adopt this architecture with that state with that state of uh, current uh, of um, of um, of how things are done, right? So we had to do something about it. And because C4SB is all about doing something about it, we said we need to do something about it, and that was, um, at the end of the day, the creation of this thing called the IBB, which stands for the Interoperable Building Box, which is a bit of a mouthful to say, which is why we just say IBB, or this is the box. Um, and despite it being called a box, it is actually a piece of software. And it's a piece of open source software who, whose purpose is to bridge the building to the cloud, the network in the building to the, the network in the cloud, which is the internet. That's its purpose. That's its role there. And that software is run, uh, operates within either a physical device, uh, a, you know, a device that you would the, that could have DIN rail mounts and things like that, right? That you would buy from somebody uh, from a from a manufacturer that you would buy and then just screw it on the wall and, and it would work. Or it's a piece of software that can be installed in a virtual environment if that building happens to have a data center or resources for, for um, uh, software to run, right? It's the same, it's the same uh, um, concept, whether it's a device or virtual. The point is that it's always on-prem. It's always on-prem so that you um, the systems in the building can always reach the cloud, whether it's the real cloud or the cloud that is at the top of the IBB, because the top of the IBB is, is in the cloud. It behaves like the cloud. Um, and by having um, the IBB in the building, you basically have the cloud without the problems of latency, without the problems of reliability of whether the, the internet connection is there or not, et cetera. And there are many other sort of reasons, right? So it's always there. It has to be on the uh, on on prem. The IBB also runs um, containers, which is um, how software is actually developed and deployed these days. Um, uh, the the 
brand name uh, that uh, most people may recognize is Docker. Docker is the type of containers, but there are other types of containers and they're all, they all have been standardized, which is great. So the IBB runs containers. So whatever, whatever piece of software uh, can be put into a container can go in the IBB, right? And what all of this does is it makes the building cloud native so that we can actually um, see it this way. Now, Antel, um, keep going, please. Okay, so how does this work? Um, so first, how does, it, how does it work from sort of the, the broad architecture, that if you think about the internet? Well, that's what I was going to say is I think that we don't need to get into any more of the detail. Okay. Um, you can show the next slide. There, there is a process for it to work on the internet. This is not the, the form for that. People don't need to know these levels of details. They can contact you for more. Um, I'll put your email address in. Why don't you stop sharing your screen and let's talk about how we're working together to actually have this relate to asset management and how asset management elevates the discussion that you're having up to the C-suite so we can start delivering measurable value to organizations in ways that we haven't before with any of our uh, association partners. So we did um, quite a bit of work um, earlier this year. Um, preparing for uh, trying to sort of figure out how we communicate all of this, how we communicate the IBB and this sort of architecture. Um, and the way to think about this that we, we found to be really sort of uh, interesting and impactful is that if you think about um, sort of the C-suite, right? and ask the question, can they actually access, do they have access to all of the data about the, the, the current operation of the building at any given time? The answer is most likely no, you can't get the data, right? So that was actually the framing that we put together for a presentation we did at, um, at the conference, a uh, real thumb conference, which is all about building owners there's a lot of building owners there and we we managed to get a really interesting slot and um, uh, a room to, uh, to make the presentation we had 120 ish people um, and uh, we presented this and we presented how uh, how everything could actually work and the point of the, the 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 point of that presentation is that the purpose of doing this is so that you can get at the data so the data can be surfaced the data can find its own, uh, it, where it can be useful. Right, so that's really sort of the architecture. And that is the same with planes and trains and automobiles. That is a consistent problem for owners and you've got a approach to solve a very real problem. And the Asset Leadership Network sees that being able to go to owners with a non-threatening partnership with the Coalition for Smarter Buildings, two nonprofits coming to say there's value to be had from looking at this. Then our members get in front of the C-suite saying asset management's important. For example, asset management governance can give you this type of solution. And then you talk about the IBB and PADI and all of those. Yeah, the, the, the other framing that the, the, the coalition is, is sort of um, working on, actually currently working on, is trying to use all of this data, this sort of new data, and framing it as um, sort of a new way of thinking about total cost of ownership. Um, the, uh, the, the coalition has started a project called TXO, which is really taking total cost of ownership the next level and first of all doing two things uh, changing the o from ownership to operations so it's really a total uh, cost of ownership but the x represents the fact that it's not just the costs you care about it's actually a whole bunch of other things the efficiency is the security is the is the carbon it's the 
um, safety, um, the, the health quality, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So we're taking the concept of TS, T, uh, TCO and we, we're creating, and it's still in, in the work, so it, this is not, it's not final, of TXO as being, say, as being able to say, this is how much it costs per square foot for you, the owner, to actually have, uh, but, to, but also start to break that down and say, this is the cost per square foot if you do this, or if you, do, if you don't do this, or if you maintain the equipment properly, or if you don't maintain the equipment properly. So it becomes a sort of a framework based on the TCO kind of way of thinking about it that then allows us to feed in data from these systems that now uh, can become um, available to then enhance the, uh, the, uh, the, the information for decision-making uh, of, of the asset. And um, one of the wonderful things that Anto brings is a similar thinking to ALN patron member Onuma Inc. And he's been working, uh, Anto has been working with Onuma Inc and with ALN member, organizational member CDV Systems and is working on presentations to the National Institute of Building Sciences and to the American Society of Heating and Refrigerating Engine, uh, and Air Conditioning Engineers in February. So this, our audience is familiar with these interactive abilities and people can reach out to us. I've posted Anto's uh, email address and we mm -hmm. can create other case studies in, um, examples of the benefits because we want to be able to showcase them in the way we do with our uh, web workshops that would be great look for, look forward to that and um i we should point out you're talking about tco and uh the great aln supporter deke smith is uh involved in a tco initiative with appa and Deke is going to be the uh, guest on Monday Live next week. Um, the Monday Live series is focused on asset management this month. And every Monday we've been struggling with teaching and learning um, through these high level leadership discussions. It's very, uh, a very good format. And uh, the end of this week's said, we needed to talk about total cost of ownership and Deke Smith is joining with Anna from uh, Texas University, uh, University of Texas, Austin on Monday. So it's a really fortuitous and synchronous relationship that uh, we've been really enjoying. Yeah, um, and, and I think that that's gonna it's going to um, surface a lot of sort of new new thoughts and new ways of um, uh, getting this in, in into play. Uh, and, actual solutions, yeah. because we've been heavy on theory yeah. for our existence, and we'll be bringing an actual solution set to owners. Yeah. Collaborative, um, open architecture, so that different companies can do their own thing and still be uh, composable and flexible for for the owner to to pick and choose the uh, best of breed. That's that's the vision. And um, uh, the uh, Monday Live um, is. Uh, why don't you tell me that, and I'll put that uh, www. Dot... I got it here. Got okay. It here. That's at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern on Mondays. The smart organizations use the 3 p.m. Eastern to include all of the United States. And um, uh, we thank you for joining us and for having this month of asset management discussions and look forward to the ways we'll be able to work together with the upcoming conferences and programs that we have coming. Really looking forward to that. So thank you. And before we leave, I want to uh, uh, take a moment to talk about a survey that I want ALN members to um, consider taking. I am. I'll, I'll post the link to the chat, Mike. 
uh, post the link in the chat and I'll try to find the, uh, the document. So with the values and benefits from uh, asset management team, we have been having some great case study presentations. And this next event, uh, which will be uh, Wednesday, at the 23rd of October at 5 p.m., we're going to be posting the results of a survey. It's a sentiment survey. And um, Nick, did you post the, that uh, link? Thank you. Yes. And it's just 10 questions to get a read on what people feel is the impact of asset management so far in their region or their country. And it's just your feelings. It's not any specifics. And uh, then on the 23rd, um, three of the founders of the Asset Management Council will be joining uh, Jim Dieter, Jack Kelly, and myself to discuss the survey. So uh, if you can, uh, if you just answer the questions, it shouldn't take four, more than five minutes. And if you make comments, it should probably only take 10 minutes unless you really are getting into your comments. So, um, uh, all right, go ahead, Nick. You want to take it away? Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, thank you, Anto, and to all of our uh, attendees today for joining us at ALN Thursday at 3. And thank you to our patron members for making programming like this and our newsletter possible. Uh, patron members, Jacobs, Mantech, Onuma, ABS Quality Evaluations, and CGI, uh, as well as all our organizational members, especially Patty IO for joining the ALN uh, and for Anto's participation in another ALN program here today, and for all that work connecting the systems that make our lives and work possible, really, uh, really great uh, mission and uh, outcome. Thank you for and, joining us, Anto. I really loved your description of how the you came up with the name, Patty. I love it, and uh, I'll I'll tell you Indonesia stories later. And uh, thank you again to the audience for uh, showing up today. And thanks, Nick, for running the tech. Bye for now.